If you want to look at the laws of natural logarithms and how we can use them in mathematics, well, we can just use, if you remember how regular logarithms work, turns out natural logs do the exact same thing. So we have a rule for adding them. So if we have the natural log of a plus the natural log of b, this is just like if you had log a plus log b, we have natural log of a times b. This is the first rule. That's the sort of adding rule. So if you add natural log of a plus natural log of b, you can say it's natural log of ab. Same thing if we subtract them. Natural log of a minus natural log of b. Well, we have a similar thing going on to what happened with regular logarithms. We have natural log of a divided by b. That's another useful rule for us. And finally, the one with powers. Oops, I think I just made that look worse. We go. So if we're looking with powers, then we can do that as well. So what if we have something like um, natural log of a to the power of n? We can say that that n is allowed to come right in front. So it's n times natural log of a. That's the one with powers. So if you have a power here, it can come in front. Or if you have something in front, you can bring it up here as a power. You're allowed to do either or because they are the same. It's equal. Well then, we can do a quick example just to use this. So let's say we want to show that natural log of 9 equals 2 times the natural log of 3. Now if you're asked to show that, what you should not do is just calculate this on your calculator and calculate this on your calculator. Although I suppose you're checking the answer, what normally you're asked to do here is to sort of work with this one. Manipulate this left side so it looks like the right or manipulate the right side so it looks like the left, or maybe you manipulate each of them until you eventually get something where they're the same. Right now, this does not look like this. So I could choose to do it either way I want. I mean, I could choose either the left side or the right side. So let's say I want to choose the right side. Let's say I want to deal with this one. Well, I can use my rules of power. So this one here, then I'm just going to sort of leave that one the same. So ln9. I'm just going to sort of, oops, maybe I don't even need to write that. I'm going to try to keep working with this one until I get ln9. Now what I can do then is I can use that rule of powers. If I have a number in front of ln3, if I use this rule right here, that means I have something times ln of something, I can take this number and put it up here. Because right? that's what it looks like, ln of a to the n. In this case, that means I can say that it's ln of 3, whoops, so ln of 3 to the power of 2. That's the same thing. This 2 just comes up if I want. There it is. Well, what's 3 to the power of 2? It's not 6. It's 3 times 3, which is 9. So ln 9. Hey, look at that. I have ln 9 equals ln 9. I've shown it. You could have also said, oh, let's do and work with the left side. You could say, well, I want to write 9 as a power. You could say 9 is equal to the power of uh, 3 to the power of 2. And then from there, the 2 can find in front. And then, hey, look at that. It's the same thing. So it doesn't matter which side you chose to work with, either the left side or the right. In this case, I chose to work on the right side, and sort of see what that gave me. But if at any point while you're doing it, you get the right side equals the left side, stop. You're done. You've shown it. You've shown that they're equivalent statements. See, ln9 equals ln9. Yep. That's how you can show. So in the next videos, I'm going to be, uh, or in the next video, I'm going to show you um, how we can work with these and actually use these rules in order to solve equations.